All right, answering your questions, these are from Instagram. What's the best studio setup for home studio recording vocals? All right, of course it depends on the budget. So I will give like, let's say a uh, budget friendly version and a uh, money no object. We start with a budget friendly option. You need an interface first. So I would definitely look into Audient and Motu. I feel these two brands give you the best bang for the buck and you will only need one channel two channels to record vocals so look into the small compact format interfaces from these two brands and you're gonna be good to go and in a budget friendly scenario i would just go ahead and use the preamps on those interfaces because in my opinion with preamps when you want color you kind of have to spend a little more because cheap color usually results in not that pleasant of a sound. But there's one uh, preamp that I recently reviewed on the channel that is very affordable and it just kind of blew my mind and is the uh, Warm Audio uh, 2MPX. I think there's also a single channel version. I have the stereo versions, which double also as a saturator is a great preamp. I love it. It's warm. It's a two bass preamp. It's really a great preamp for the money, not even considering the money. Uh, microphone wise, there's so many options. Of course, the omnipresent SM7 is always a good safe choice to record vocals. Not always the best, especially for pop and hip hop but great for rock and metal and overall is a great workhorse. But if you want to have a more refined pop radio friendly sound from the beginning with the extended top end and everything, again, there's so many companies and so many offerings out there. I would definitely look into uh, the 47 from uh, Roosevelt Audio. I would look into Jay-Z microphones, which are a little more on the pricey side, uh, still kind of affordable for color. They have a 12 and a, I think 67, both are great, very colored microphone. One very pop and open uh, with a great top end, the 67 dark and warm. So if you want a strong character, I would look into those. And of course, Austrian Audio. You know how much I absolutely adore the OC818, which is probably uh, gonna be in the money no object option because regardless the money, that, was, that one is one of my absolute favorite microphones of all times. That's what I use for Bella and um, it's just a great microphone. But uh, that one is kind of on the pricey side. They now have a OC16, which is a great flat, but still flattering a workhorse condenser microphone, which sound amazing. And if you want the same quality that you have with the OCA18, I would look into the single capsule version of it because that one is a dual capsule. Uh, there's the OC18 instead of 818, which is the single capsule if you want to record vocal and you only need to record vocal. You don't necessarily need two capsules. It's an absolutely great microphone. Actually, when put in cardioid mode, the OCA18 and the 18 are exactly the same. And when I say exactly the same, I really mean exactly the same to the point that you could stereo match them because uh, the OC818 and 18 have a ceramic capsule. So there's zero tolerance. They are all exactly the same. They, they don't uh, degrade over time. They don't change based on temperature or humidity. It's an absolutely great microphone. And even for a budget option, I would still throw in a compressor. I don't feel an EQ is absolutely necessary when tracking vocals, when you have the right mic, the right preamp in front of the right singer, that's all you need. But uh, a compressor will definitely help, will help the mixing, will help the performance, will just give you a much better sound, a much better dynamic uh, to start with and you won't have to fight that much, both in recording to try to avoid clipping and everything and then in mixing. And again, you know what I think, I'm not a big fan of buying middle of the road gear because soon enough you will hear the limits of it they don't sound that great to begin with. But today, fortunately, we have 
amazing units at, at a somewhat affordable price. There's still the option of getting a super cheap RNC compressor, which is an incredible compressor for the price, very transparent, almost foolproof is almost impossible to make it sound bad. But at a $1,400 for a distressor, that would be my choice. You know, the question didn't specify, you know, the lowest budget possible. So I feel $1,400 for a distressor, you get one of the absolute best compressor in the history of music at, at a somewhat affordable price. And especially we're talking about vocals. So arguably the most important thing, you don't necessarily want to chip out. Even if you go on 500 series, you might um, save some money on the module. Actually, Empirical Lab just released a, a 500 series compressor which is very similar to the distressor but again you need to buy a rack if you don't have it already and at the end of the day you're going to spend the same or more but i would keep it between these two to be honest yeah there's some other options at you know middle of the road prices um but this would be my choice as for money no object option <laughs> there's only imagination is your only limit at this point because uh, i would probably track it starting with a mastering rate converter. I usually track balanced vocals, for example, with the AD Plus, my mastering capturing uh, converter. You can get one of the many, Prism, Lavery, whatever else. As for the microphone, I could just start throwing names out there and just pick the more expensive ones, but that's not always the best choice. That's the truth. And again, I give this example of Bellas because we tried everything and I am lucky enough to be able to, to have the opportunity to try literally everything. I actually had uh, her singing on Adele's mic, you know, for the, for the first demos that we did and not the same model that Adele's used, Adele's mic, like the exact microphone she recorded. Um, so I had, and, and everything in between. Uh, we tried like M50s, vintage, vintage 87, 67, so you name it. I ended up picking the OCA18, which I think is an absolutely amazing mic. Totally foolproof. That's the beauty of the mic, and because I kind of am confident um, advising people this mic, because it's not a colored mic, but it's an extremely flattering microphone. It's not hyped and it will give you pretty much exactly what you hear in the room, which is a thing of beauty when it's done correctly. Because many microphones state that they do this, but they actually don't. They're always hyped here and there and there's some kind of weird thing going with the transient response or the frequency response. This one is like exactly what you expect to hear, right? And, uh, and, and it's amazing and it takes pressure, it's remote controllable. The ceramic capsule, which is by the way, designed around uh, the idea of a C12 capsule. So we are talking about royalty and the mic realm. That would be my choice regardless of the price. Of course, if you can get a hold of a C800 from Sony, and if you want that Drake like sound, that would be the mic for you. So again, microphones change based on the singer. There's not one size fits all. But again, if you really have no budget, then at that point you buy five of them. You know, start with a 49, a 50, a 251, and so on. All the big names are classics for a reason. So uh, if you have no problems with budget, you won't have any problems picking up a handful <laughs> of those microphones. As for the preamp, this will surprise some people and many people out there will just go for the 1073 vintage original, you know, and $7,000 per channel. A lot of engineers just go for that. Um, I actually recently recorded with an original vintage 1073, the real deal, you know, from back then at Paramount Studio here in LA. And it is amazing. Yet, it is not my favorite for vocals. For many people, this is heresy. For me, the 1073 is amazing on some vocals. It kind of distorts fairly easy. And sometimes on some vocals, depending on the mic, it's not exactly what you want. Instead, for me, my go-to has always been the API 512. I absolutely love uh, that preamp. And if you get the V version instead of the C version, now you also have an output knob, which is very, very useful, especially if you have other things in chain. For the compressor, for that, again, I have no doubt about this since I have my Stamp Child MK2. That has been my 
absolute go-to for tracking vocals, for mixing vocals as well. That is an insane compressor. You just can pin down any vocals of almost any genre down to 20 dB and it just sounds better and better and better and better. And um, alternatively, of course, an 1176 is still, you know, one of the most used. Pick your poison there. I prefer, for the most part, either Stam. Uh, the new West Audio is nice because it's a kind of a different take on the 1176 and it's got digital recall, it's got Carlin in them as opposed to the original Transformers. Um, uh, the new stem with the tube in it would be, it's an amazing you know, compressor in general for both mixing and tracking. And um, from time to time, I do also like the West Audio Ria, which is, it's got that nice, nice polished top end, right? Just, it, it's just the color box, just running things through it. And as for the EQ, you will laugh about this, but because it's so freaking expensive, but uh, recently I, I was using the ER equalizer, the stereo ER equalizer. I'll put a picture here at um, Dweezil Zappa Studio. That's what we mixed vocals uh, with. And it's just mind blowing. That EQ, that top end is mind blowing. We have a pair of vintage uh, in perfect condition, pool text in there, like the real deal again. And that one just stomped on him. So keep that in mind <laughs> to be a pair of original Pultec by a mile, that says a lot. I also love my Empress EQ though for tracking vocals. That's also pretty amazing. I usually track with a little bit of top end on that. But again, I don't think an EQ is necessary. Of course, I'm lucky to have many and with a flock, I can just, you know, patch them all with one click. So I try them all depending on the vocals. Like recently we did a lot of vocals here. We did um, a trap, Colombian trap artist named Kata. We did that, I saved her chain. Uh, we did background vocals with Lindsay Compton, shout out to her. We do Bella all the time. So we, we've been doing a lot of vocals and you know, EQs are, are come and go you know, in the chain. So this would be my, my list. I hope this answered the question. If you guys have questions for the Q and A, leave them in the comments down below. Consider using the super thanks, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, stay safe, and see you next time. Hands on my neck, hands get my throat, throat. Lift me up, up, man, take control, up. Heart is so gone, my type. Don't you know I fall for the bad type? You play the role of an angel pretty well.